Hey, welcome back. So last time, we talked about how variables can store information. But honestly, that's kind of like having a whole workshop full of amazing tools and just never using them. Today, we're flinging those doors open, and we're going to put those tools and our variables to work. Let's get into it. So let me just start with this idea. A variable is just a box to hold a value, right? I mean, that's what we've learned so far. And it's true. But is that really the whole story? Is it just a passive little container? Well, if you think so, get ready, because we're about to see that that's just scratching the surface. Here's our game plan for today. First, we'll see variables in action. Then we'll get into the essential arithmetic toolkit every programmer needs. After that, we'll tackle a classic little snag, whole numbers versus decimals. Then I'll show you how to write your code short and sweet. And finally, we'll put all your new knowledge to the test. All right, first up, let's get these variables moving. This is the part where programming stops feeling like you're just organizing stuff and starts feeling like you're actually building and solving things. And this is the absolute key. A variable isn't just a static thing that sits there. It's an active, dynamic tool. You can take the numbers inside them, do math with them, see which one's bigger, and create totally new values out of thin air. This is the real engine of your code. So how do we actually do these calculations? Well, you're gonna need some tools. Let's jump in and check out the most fundamental toolkit you will use literally every single day you're coding, the arithmetic operators. And here they are. Now, most of these are gonna look super familiar for math class, right? You've got plus, minus, the little star for multiplication and a slash for division. But check out that last one, the percent sign. That's called the modulo operator, and it is so useful. It doesn't give you the answer to the division, it gives you the remainder. So if you do 10 modulo three, you get one, because three goes into 10 three times with one left over. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, let's see this in a real bit of code. Let's say we have a equals 10 and b equals three. Adding them, you get 13. Subtracting, you get seven. Multiplying gives you 30. No surprises there. But wait a second, look at division. A divided by B gives us three, not 3.33, just three. And then modulo, A percent B gives us that remainder of one, just like we said. So what's going on with that division? Why a whole number? Well, that question leads us perfectly into our next section. All right, pay close attention here. This is one of those little details that can cause some serious confusion if you don't nail it down early. We're talking about the big difference between whole numbers, integers, and numbers with decimals. Let's make this super clear. This slide shows it all. On the left, with integers, when you divide 5 by 2, the programming language says, hey, you're working with integers, so I'm giving you an integer back. It doesn't round the answer. It just chops off the decimal part completely. Poof. So 5 divided by 2 is just 2. But look at the right. If you want that precise answer, you've got to use decimal numbers. By writing 5.0 and 2.0, you're signaling that you want a decimal result, and you get the correct answer, 2.5. Okay, so you've got the basics of calculating down. Now let's talk about a pro move, how to write code that's more efficient and clean. You know, good programmers are lazy in a smart way. They don't want to type more than they need to. These shortcuts are a big part of that. So you're going to find yourself doing this all the time, taking a variable and adding something to it. The standard way is on the left, x equals x plus one. It works, but it's a bit long. The shorthand way is much cleaner. x plus equals one does the exact same thing. And if you're just adding or subtracting one, which is super common, you can use x plus plus, that's called increment, or x minus minus for decrement. You will see these two everywhere. All right, we've covered a lot. We've seen the operators, we've dodged the integer trap, and we've learned some pro shortcuts. So now it's time to put it all together. You ready for a little quiz? Okay, take a good look at this piece of code. We've got variable A is five, variable B is two, and then we create a result variable that's A times B plus three. So what's the final value that gets stored in result? Take a second, think back to the order of operations from your school days. Let's break it down. Just like in math, your code has rules. And the rule is, multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction. So the computer first does a times b. That's five times two, which gives us 10. Then, and only then, does it do the addition. 
it takes that 10 and adds 3, which equals 13. And there you have it. The final result is 13. If you got that right, awesome job. It means you're already starting to think like a programmer, following the sequence of logic step by step. Now, to really make all this sink in, you gotta try it yourself. So here's a little challenge for you. On your own time, create two imager variables, one for eight and one for four. Then just run through all five of the operators we learned today. Actually, seeing the results pop up is the absolute best way to build that programming muscle memory. So think about where we are. We've gone from seeing variables as just boring storage containers to understanding their dynamic tools you can use to create and solve things. You now have the fundamental arithmetic toolkit for programming. So the only question left is, what are you going to build with it? Thanks for watching.